Well, I will say this about NASCAR. At least they tried. And that is better than how the Coca-Cola 600 ended. Because, again, I think we would have seen a lot of uproar on social media had this race just ended. And, I mean, we we, we saw it, to be honest. We, we thought the race was going to end. We thought they were going to just wait for the broadcast window. And then, oh, sorry, USA and NBC have to get to IndyCar. You know, but uh, credit to NASCAR, credit to NBC, although I think the network uh, changing over could have been communicated a little bit better or a little bit more promptly. Um, we got the race in, and uh, I think you have to give them credit for that. But I'm not a fan of how race control handled the wet weather tire decision. First of all, I think there was a little bit of a gap uh, between the initial cell that opened up and the lightning delay that preceded the massive cell that we had to wait out for, I think, almost two hours for. Um, I, I don't know why we didn't utilize the wet weather tires right then and there. I feel like we could have gotten a handful of laps in. Maybe NASCAR is just a little bit hesitant because we've never seen this before. Uh, but Jeff Gluck put out a tweet that I think summarizes my feelings on this pretty well. He said, please just stop holding their hands. This is the top level of professional stock car racing in the world. Let them figure it out themselves. If they screw up, oh well. And then my editor-in-chief over at lastcar.infobrockbeard quoted that and said, exactly. And on top of this, the teams will often try different strategies so you can get notes on what happens under each of those circumstances. If there's some unspoken safety concern behind this hesitance, then why even present these tires as an option? So again, I'm, I'm a little bit sympathetic toward, towards NASCAR in this situation because I understand it's uncharted territory. But I, I think Jeff's point ultimately wins out here. This is the top level of stock car racing, certainly in the country, I would say in the world uh, as well. Um, I think we should put it in the hands of the teams, of the drivers, of the crew chiefs to make the decision for what they think is best. If you think the track is ready for slicks, go try slicks. If it doesn't work out, you're going to figure it out pretty quickly. If you think that you've managed your tires a little bit better than, say, Kyle Larson, who had some blistering on his right rear, said it was, it felt like it was practically flat because of how worn out it was, but you think you've managed your tires better, you should be able to stay out of the pits, leapfrog everybody that comes in to put on new tires, and see if that strategy works out for you. I don't like how NASCAR put the teams in a box and said, everybody's going to stay out here or everybody's going to come down pit road if they want to refuel, I guess, but you can't change tires. Oh, wait a second. Actually, you can change tires. We're hearing some radio from some teams that say they have to change tires, so we're changing our mind here. I mean, I, I, that I'm not a fan of at all. And I, I, under, I understand that it's not Formula One here, and, you know, it, it's not something that you do every day. But I just I wish that NASCAR would give these teams a little bit more freedom. And I think that if we, not if, when we run into a situation like this again, because, you know, we're going to, but the joke, uh, you know, but if, you, if you're having a drought to spring a NASCAR race there, right, we're going to deal with uh, wet weather situations like this again in the not-too-distant future. Put it in the hands of the teams and let them decide what's best for them. I think that would ultimately be the best way to let this play out. But like I said, we got the race in. I did not think we were going to get the race in. I thought it was going to be another sort of farce situation where we had these tires. We ended up not using them, and we had to go away because TV has too much power, and they've got to get the IndyCar. I don't know why the IndyCar pre-race couldn't have been on CNBC. I'm sorry to all the Shark Tank fans out there, but I think your marathon reruns uh, don't take precedence over uh, what, what's going on with the uh, live IndyCar race. And uh, IndyCar also didn't come back to USA for the finish. I was a little bit disappointed in that, so I think NBC could have handled things a little bit better on their end as well. But all in all, I think uh, a net plus, plus minus, it was a net plus based on how everything turned out today. And you got to give NASCAR credit for at least trying. NASCAR tried. And I think when this was all starting to happen, it reminded me of the Coca-Cola 600 because we all saw the track drying process. We thought we're going to get racing for the Coke 600. We're going to see Kyle Larson hit the track. And then they said, no, still the track is not viable dry enough for racing when i was seeing what was going on in new hampshire on tv at first it was like okay the track's drying up but then once we got towards the end i realized okay the corners are still very wet with that asphalt surface compared to the other surface on the higher line the straightaways but overall i feel nascar especially since this is something unprecedented because with richmond we started under wet we transitioned to dry here it was it's dry, it's wet, most likely it's going to end wet. We had another rainstorm coming. I think NASCAR should have utilized like an emergency 
driver's meeting, team meeting for the crew chief. Like, okay, this is the plan. We got 73 laps. We're going to throw caution with 25 laps after we go going just to see how our tires are. But then after that, it's all on the teams because you're the best drivers. You're the best teams. Yeah, but, you should try to figure it out. But see, that's exactly it, John. I'm, I'm never a fan of competition cautions. And again, I, I think it might be understandable in this instance because it, it genuinely is unprecedented territory that we're dealing with here. But I mean, again, I just and I know it's different racing on an oval and drivers that mm-hmm. don't you know get to get to deal with this nearly as often. But, you know, in Formula One, if a, if a storm cell comes over the track and it starts raining, there's only a safety car if somebody goes off track or wrecks because of it. You know, I mean, the teams get to decide, you know, can you go one more lap on the slicks before, you know, where's the changeover point? It adds a whole element of strategy here. When NASCAR throws the caution and says we're mandating teams have to be on this tire and everybody has to change over. I mean, not only does that throw a wrench in the strategy, but it stops the race for about 10 minutes. I just, I, I wish that they would give the teams as much creative control over their strategies as possible. But I do understand that perhaps for the first time, in a situation like this, especially New Hampshire, the fastest track we've ever tried, the wet weather tires with not a lot of data. I suppose it's understandable here, but I hope it's something they consider in the future. 